What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. If you want to be successful, look inside. We don't like sitting in the discomfort. Then all of a sudden that day came when I got 20 bucks and two free drinks to do a show, and I was like, oh, shit, here we go, baby. You know? <laughs> Thank God she hasn't caught a chicken yet. <laughs> Don't be soft. That patience is key. If all my friends are winning, then it's going to make me want to win more. What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweaty Dog Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. She is a national broadcast contributor, author, host, agent, and she's been seen on Today, E, Inside Edition, GMA, and Fox. Please help us welcome the one and only Sydney Sadik. How's it going? It's good. How's it going with you? You're doing great. How you been? I have been doing well, sort of in my cocoon here, up <laughs> outside of New York City in this room. This is where everything happens. Is right here where I'm talking to you. Well, from I, right I like now. I like the white with the colors popping. I see it. I know she got she's Ooh. she's Zoom ready. Exactly. I oh, am. got the book two in the back. I see it. You got a few books, books in the back. <laughs> oh, you should see the ones that we have downstairs. All of the uh, the writers' copies are down in our basement, so there's a lot of Sydney around here. Yeah, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. So, how have things been for you? You know, as far as with everything you you got going on, you know, obviously with COVID being you know a thing that's really like shifted the way that business and the way people operate. How is that for you? And kind of like you know, how has it been now? You know, now it's been a year already. How has it been going into this year for you when it comes to all your projects? So to be honest with you, I am the busiest that I have ever been. I used to think that busyness was really just moving around a lot. That's what I I represented business by. Now I'm not on a plane every week and I'm able to be so much more productive during the time that I'm in just one place. So like before COVID, I was literally in LA, DC, New York on a rotating basis every two to three weeks. So I was living a very nomadic life. Now, because I'm more stationary, I've been able to really hunger down and get focused. I launched my book. I started the first ever daily Instagram live talk show. We just had 200 episodes this past Monday. Congrats. But thank you. That's incredible. Which is like, it's an exciting milestone, but also like, wow, I've been living with my family for a really long time. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. So yeah, professionally, everything's at like a really great place right now. Personally, a little lacking, but that's all good. Totally hear you. So do you, would you, uh, would you say you preferred all the traveling or you like the focused in and being able to get this uh, higher production done? I'm liking the success and reward of the moment that I'm living in right now, but I do miss the excitement of you know, being at events, hosting events that aren't just virtual, um, being surrounded by different people and cultures. So I'm thinking I'm a little bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying like sort of the hermit lifestyle here, but as soon as like there's some sort of announcement that we can all kind of go back to normal, I will be out a lot. Amen to that. That's <laughs> me. I love being out at the events with the people. I don't know. It's just something about people, right? I love people. Human interaction. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've never really been a huge, I mean, given I work in health and fitness and I feel like I should be a people person, I've never been a huge people person. But now that I haven't really been able to interact with everyone, I'm like, other than this guy here, which, you know, we have our moments. But uh, I'm like, man, you know, I would I would die to go into a crowd. Maybe not. Maybe that's uh, not the right phrase, but <laughs> I would love to be around a group of people, uh, you know, like kind of, I mean, we were talking about like Art Basel before, you know, I miss those days back. We're going to be yeah. able to talk about those days, 10, 15 years from now. Be like, oh, back in the day. <laughs> That's what everyone says. People are like this moment in time that we're living in is going to feel like just a short minute. But I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. No. Yeah, I think we're going to always look back and be like, whoa, did we really live through that? And we're not going to be able to look at certain things the same way. So like for me, I was always dressed in tie dye. I guarantee you, I will never dress in tie dye once this whole thing ends. Like certain things like that, you know? Totally hear you. Totally just hear you. just tie dye. Like, what's <laughs> what else will I not want to look at anymore? <laughs> I feel like I'll never want to look at a puzzle again. We can get rid of Fair. all of those things. Fair. I'm, I like skills now. By the way, yeah. I also am like the master at Scrabble. My scores have topped okay. the charts. My word game is strong. But anything like that that I've been doing a lot of. I, I'm definitely ready to get rid of my TV and like all my like HBO Go subscription. I'm ready to get rid of all of that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's not a movie that's you ever been seen. put out that I haven't watched yet. Or sure. Really? 
That is so funny. I do watch a lot of TV these days, but movies to get me to focus for two hours, it's a little difficult. Don't tell anybody that though. <laughs> so Sydney, you've obviously done a lot of really cool stuff, you know, and obviously going back to, you know, hosting events, putting them together. You know, you got your book, you've been seen on many big platforms, you know, host, um, you're also an agent. Tell us a little bit about that. Like, how how are you managing all those things? Because I know it's not the easiest thing to be a high performer in all these different things. How have you been able to do it? And kind of like walk us through like how do you how do you keep yourself composed and how do you make time for all these things? Yeah. Well, I'm not an agent. I luckily have my own agent. I have a great team of people who are behind me. But in terms of my Instagram live show, I do everything myself. So I host, I book, I produce. I just like being involved in every step of the way. Um, because I feel like that's why the people come back is because of the spin that I put on it. And I don't trust anyone else to sort of do that, to be honest. But I'm definitely someone who's sort of a workaholic. I don't sleep much. Um, even when I was, you know, having a social life before all this, I still always put work first. And, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. I feel like we all frown upon ourselves and we are so addicted to what we do and we love it so much. But I think it's really nice to be passionate. And when you are so passionate, you want to do something 24-7. Um, so for me, my show is consistently each day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. So I know that's going to happen. The Today Show picked up a Friday version of it in August, which I've been doing every week. Congrats. Since. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. And um, so that, like, I know it happens each and every day. And then the mornings are really when I take my time to do emails and to get on some calls. Afternoons, I'm usually doing podcasts or my TV appearances, um, planning for our virtual events, which we've been doing a lot of throughout the pandemic. So my days really are slammed um, from, you know, eight in the morning until wee hours at night. But like I said, like, I don't look at that as a bad thing. I look at it as being a sign of, I'm doing the right thing right now. And I'm just, you know, appreciative of that since I know that there's, you know, a lot of people right now who are hurting and trying to figure out a new career path. I, yeah. I understand that. So how did the yeah. daily Instagram lives come about? What was your thought process behind that? Love to hear that. So I <laughs> had left New York city to come out to the Hamptons for what I thought was going to be four days. I was like, all right, you know, this thing called COVID, but like I have to be on Good Morning America on Monday. I'm just going to come out here for a few days. No, that trip, I did not leave. And I ended up staying out East for six months straight without going back to my apartment once. So after two weeks, I was like, this is scary. And like lunchtime was the most social time of my day. I would go meet up with, you know, producers um, or different people I wanted to network with. And I loved being social for that 30 minute time period that was gone very, very quickly. So I was like, if I'm feeling alone during lunchtime, then a lot of other people are as well. So that's where the idea of lunchtime with Sydney was born to make people feel less alone during that time for 30 minutes, bring on different guests to show the behind the scenes of their behind the scenes because they're in their world and not in a TV studio. And really cool things happen. Like, you know, the artist Ashley Longshore, she like took us through her entire art collection in her huge house Badass. in Louisiana. The designer, Michael Costello, he showed us how um, he made a million face masks. He, he was the first designer to do that, to give to um, healthcare workers. So he brought us into the factory. Like these little things that would never happen in a TV studio, they happen here. And I just kept going with it. What's the response, Ben, that you've gotten from your audience uh, from, from these little insights? They really enjoy it. I think they find it to be very authentic and they love it that they can actually ask questions live as we go. And I'm able to, you know, communicate those questions to our guests. So like a Carol Baskin or, you know, um, Marie Forleo or Candace Cameron Bray, like these are people that a lot of, you know, fans, they want to meet, they wish they could ask that question and we're able to make that happen on this show. Um, so they appreciate the Carol Baskin, like the, the Netflix. Oh, yeah. Really? How was that? That was a, Probably intriguing. Carol, Carol, Carol. Well, I wore um, tiger print for her. Oh, yeah. Killed it. Yep. And she was like, I love what you're wearing. I was like, thank you so much. Um, she was great. I was probably most excited about Carol out of everybody just because like Tiger King was the first show we all kind of like binged watched, I feel like, right at the start of COVID. Um, but she was funny and like very real and, you know, also like, was just being honest about her take on the situation with Joe Exotic. So mm. I feel like it was a, it was a cool moment to have her intimately like that for 30 minutes. Wow. That's incredible. And uh, what, 
what would you say has been your biggest takeaway from, you know, over two, you said over 200 episodes, right? Or you're about to hit 200. We um, just hit 200 today. It was incredible. 202. Wow. That's, I mean, that's tremendous. The, the consistency right there is, it's hard to do. What has been uh, really some of your biggest takeaways from the whole daily conversation that you've been having with people, even like learning experiences from your audience? I think the takeaway is that everyone is sort of going through this, this being the pandemic. And like, sometimes you think like, okay, but like they're more successful or they're more famous. Like, are they feeling it the same way that the everyday person is? And the answer is yes. Like everyone basically is annoyed, upset, a little Mm -hmm. emotional. So I find that to sort of be nice because it shows that these people aren't trying to act like you know, they have a different life. Like they are very much going through what we are all going through. So I think that's a big takeaway. Um, I also think just like a personal takeaway for me is that if you do something consistently, things can happen. Like the show now is sponsored um, by really exciting brands, which obviously wasn't happening at the beginning, but now it is. Um, So, you know, be be an executor. Don't just be an idea person, like make it happen. Yeah. And um I don't know. I also just feel like as me as a journalist who was always known for going on TV to talk about clothes um, and celebrities and like very product driven, like now people see that I can interview and that's what I'm best at. So it's uh it's nice to be able to have that. So I got two questions for you. Um, you got three. <laughs> there we go. Only three and then we only three and that's it. Hi. No, just kidding. <laughs> First one. Um, are you going to continue this show? post COVID after COVID really does settle down, is it going to change somewhat? Is it going to continue to be what it is? Um, and how do you see that? Well, the unfortunate truth is I don't feel like things are getting that much better right now, COVID wise. So I feel like this is going to go on for at least another six months. I, mm-hmm. I personally think. You just um, saw Texas open up though. So who knows? Right? I know. Knows? I know. Crazy. Spend some time up here where we are. It's like a different, you know, these, every state is like its own world right now. It's hard, but where I am in New York, I think it's going to take a while to get back to some sort of a normal. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think in general, people are always going to be more cautious about where they choose to go. I don't think people are just going to be running to concerts or running to the movies, even if it is open. So I feel like content like this or what you guys are doing, like it's still going to be needed. Mm -hmm. So I take every day by day. I'm a planner, but I know with media, media is constantly changing. We saw last night on Instagram that likes were completely taken away. Like, you know, that would really affect things for people who use a platform like that, you know, as their business and as income. So my point is, is like, it's hard for me to say what's going to happen beyond right now in this moment. I know that we have really cool things planned throughout summer. I'm hoping to continue this, but if another opportunity comes up as a result of all of this work, then I'm also open to that too. Love that. Question number two, because I know this has to do with social media and I, you being somebody who's an interviewer now, it can, and finding that as a true passion of what you're really good at. Are you doing stuff on clubhouse? Love Clubhouse. Love. Do you? Love it. Yeah, love it. I actually got to spend a little bit more time. I slacked this last week. It was crazy. But the few weeks yeah. before, I was going pretty hard. Um, and it's just really cool. Like, I, I say, I'm like, I've never been on another platform where you get the opportunity to actually speak within the same panel or ask questions to, like, some of these big names, entrepreneurs, celebs, innovators, um, you know, on business people. And it's incredible the openness as well you know what i mean it's just kind of like there's no it's like oh because you're a regular person or you think oh we're not gonna answer your question no, it's just like no like let's just sit down and communicate and let's all share information and you really mm-hmm. have the 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 uh the chance to also show yourself as as credible and authority what you know and yeah. people are like man who are you like what do it's, you do you know and it's just it's very beautiful. accessible and it's so funny because it's so true like paris Hilton, she showed up in one of the rooms that i host and i know she knows me but like Still, like, you know, this is something new. So it's cool, like you're saying, when you see these big names, you know, interacting with you guys. But there, it's also interesting to look at, like, these people who are clearly, like, clubhouse celebrities. Like, people who were clearly on, like, day one. And, like, yeah. they have these all-night rooms. Like, this guy, Brad, Crazy. and, like, 
safety like it's wild um and so like i'll message my friends I'm like do you guys know who these people are and they're like no it's all from clubhouse and i think that's cool like i think it's great when a platform can give people a new opportunity and to shine but i'm loving it I, like last night i was taking a bath like two in the morning had it on i was talking i'm like this is great no one can see me perfect oh it's <laughs> the best i love that that's the best one we host one every friday and uh with, oh, really? with one of our friends james quigley and and I'm always just like walking around, like my shirt off. No one knows. No one knows what I'm doing. I'm like, this now is... they do. Well, and now they, they do. Yeah, yeah, now I kind of expose myself. Sorry, guys. Well, you can think about it if you want. I don't know how appealing that is <laughs> to people, but <laughs> but look, honestly, I think it's just interesting because it's just like nobody goes in there already trying to figure out like, okay, where are their pictures? Where's their videos? How many likes? How many comments? Yeah. Now yeah. it's more of like substance. Okay, here's your bio. Um, here's one profile pic. Okay, that's the topic of the room. I'm interested to actually learn what they're going to talk about. Oh, my God. Yeah. This person really knows what we're talking about. Oh, my God. What is this? Okay, now let me go into their bio. Let me check. Okay, they got their Instagram, Twitter. Okay, and then it acts like a funnel. And then now people can actually go see more of what you do and more of what, and get more of what you want. I'm calling yeah. it the resurrector of Instagram. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's <laughs> very smart. And I feel like now that Instagram has um, come out with this update where you can conference in three people mm -hmm. to Instagram live. I feel like they're kind of doing that. It's like copy club. They're house. always doing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Like what they did with always. TikTok. Always. So <laughs> Reels. Like yeah. Reels. But I feel like it teaches you, like you can never get too comfortable on yep. one platform. Cause like you never know, like Facebook, I'm sure we all thought would never, not that it's gone away, but it's really not top of mind. Unless it's no, sort of like sure. our parents, well, parents, right? Yeah. Right. Now there's like yeah. big, there's yeah. big online communities. Like I know there's a new one out now from like the same, it's like a bunch of the e-board from Teachable. They opened one called, they started one called Circle like a year ago. And now a lot of people are moving over to that for like online communities instead of using Facebook. Um, yeah. Just because it's a lot more interactive uh, and a lot more personable uh, along with, you know, probably having a little better troubleshooting than Facebook gives you. Yeah, no, true that. So do you host any of your own rooms and do your own interviews on Clubhouse? Yeah, I do. I've hosted many. I hosted like three of them last week, um, around three the week before. I'm going to host one um, this coming week. I love hosting them. Like for me, it's fun because it's a different style of interviewing. Like when I'm on my lives, I'm a little bit more polished, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm being seen, but when you're not being seen, you can kind of be a little more looser. And I don't know if that's just like a mental thing that we do. So when we're not seen. Yeah, but it's true. And so I enjoy it. And it's also a way for me to feel like I'm helping people. I mentor lots of students right now. I do that every week, um, affiliated with my alma mater, George Washington University. But you know, it's not just like students that like need the advice. Like there are very grown, successful people who still want to learn and find new ways to pivot. So I feel like I'm able to do that on Clubhouse. So it almost feels like rewarding in that sense. How do you, uh, when you host rooms versus interview people on Instagram live or you know in person, like you were doing with journalism? Yeah. Is there a different feel for it? You know, like trying to moderate the the conversation on Clubhouse versus because I, I can tell in, in some of the room we we've hosted, like there's like that awkward pause. Do you talk? Do I talk? Like who's muted? Yeah. Who's unmuted? How do you? I what, think people are just getting the, used to it, too. Yeah. What are yeah. some of the best practices that you found to kind of allow the flow of the conversation to occur? It's a good question. And my mother has listened to every one that I do. And she just told me on my last one, she's like, you really got it right tonight. And that's when I really put my hosting hat on. I was like, all right, this is not as casual as we think it is. Bring what you do on TV and do it here. Even though you have four other women who are on this co-hosting, like someone's got to take charge sometimes. And I don't like stepping on people's toes, you know, in a collaborative right. sense but I realize that someone has to. So you should definitely assign someone to be that point. I'm always saying things like this now throughout it. And I'm like, hi everybody. And I say this literally, I swear to you, like every 10 ish minutes, I'm like, please make sure to go to the bottom of the right screen, click your raise your hand button, interact. We want to hear from you. Make sure you follow our moderators. Like I am literally that person. And then I'll, yeah. And I'll say, or well, answer your questions in 30 seconds or less. Like, I think it's really important to provide structure, not be afraid, um, you know, to move the conversation along, but never let that pause happen. It happened that, that one time with all of these girls who were also on TV and they asked me to be on this. So I, you know, didn't want to step, like I said, on their toes. 
And I was like, this is never happening again. So never let a pause happen ever. I love that. Love the insight. Uh, that's definitely powerful, especially now that you're seeing things just streamlining more towards the audio base, especially during COVID. It's just like you got podcasting coming up. Audibles are exploding, you know, more than ever. Yeah. I think they did a huge, um, you were doing a comparison now how like, um, I think Amazon was saying they have 48,000 hardcover books. They only had 220,000. Um, I think it was like at the beginning of COVID or something like that. And it's like tripled um their audibles so everything like audio base is just like skyrocketing which is really really insane it's gonna be really really interesting to see where it goes it's a shame because you know it's like to book uh to book to record my book's audio book i'd have to go into a studio and i've just been so (laughs) safe this whole time like of course i want my audio book but this is like what it comes down to these days it's like what are you willing to sacrifice help for and that's always you know, the question I keep in mind, which is frustrating, but the audio book is one place where I have had to sort of, um, you, sacrifice. Right? You plan on doing it eventually? I think so. As long as it's not so eventually where it feels irrelevant, <laughs> like maybe right. at that point onto the next book, I right. think it's hard. And if you, if you do record audio for this book or your next book, are you going to be the one recording it? Cause it always kind of irks me a little bit when I, when I'm like, no, when I hear the author's voice and then I hear, and then I Somebody listen else? to the, the audible Narrator. or the audio book. And I'm like, Oh, you've got someone to narrate this. Like it just, yeah, this no. doesn't feel the same. You don't get like the same passion. It'll definitely be me. And I'm sure when I'm like, I'm 27 now, I feel like when I turn 40, I'm going to have like no voice. Cause all I do is talk and talk. And I'm sure that will not help that. Um, but I will definitely be the voice of my own audiobooks. I, yeah, I like to own, you know, everything that I do and I'm not good at letting oh, others love it. Do. So actually, in other words, on the book topic, I want to dive a little bit into that. What made you want to come up with your own book and maybe tell us a little bit about your book? Yeah. So first of all, I was a journalism major in school. So writing is at the core of what I do. I became known for my writing work before I became known for being on TV. So that's like the first thing. Um, And really the whole idea of just writing a book came about when I was realizing that after being on these national shows, my segments were like six to eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And I would get messages on Instagram from women and men of all ages and backgrounds and body types and everything else. And they all had so many questions and I couldn't give it to them on that six to eight minute clip. So I'm like, well, if there's one place to really get into it, it's definitely a book. Um, and so Aim High is really a motivational guide to helping people find their sense of personal style. But it's so much more than like a how to dress book. It's really actually not that. It's really lots of stories and anecdotes, um, really about how to bring out your confidence from within and leading those lessons um, through my personal experiences. And the book is not a memoir. The last thing I wanted to do at 27 was to be like, hi, I wrote a book. Look at everything I've done. Like, that's not the point. The point was to write a book for the person who's on the journey. And you might have already had kids and been married and are still kind of looking like reinvent yourself. And that's why I think it really sort of works for everybody and lots of men. It's unbelievable. I never imagined all these guys like write to me that they love the book, which I'm so excited to hear because I have a lot of great friends who are guys and, you know, I wanted it to be friendly to everybody. Um, But... Yeah, that, that's See, in a now, now we got to get the book. I know. I, I'm about to. That was a I'm little hint. Order on Amazon. Yeah, that was the hint. That was the address. hint. That was a little hint. We got you. We'll send you the address. We definitely got to get address. it. I'll send it your way. You mentioned confidence, right? You mentioned confidence. One thing of instilling confidence and bringing out the confidence of people. What is something that you do for yourself? And what is something that you would uh, advise people to do as a way to be able to instill more confidence and bring out more confidence in their daily life to just be higher achievers aim higher i think it's just a mindset like the way that i dress always affects my mood and that's why the tagline of the book is style your life achieve your goals if you are dressed for the part you will feel the part Yo, so like if on, I'm, I've been trying to tell him this for for a minute now no, but like if that's what he's comfortable in and that's no, your I, vibe, I just that's what works you right like for me like if i'm just in sweatpants and a t-shirt and my hair is not done whatever i don't feel great so for me having structure and what i wear from monday to friday is what gets me out of bed and what gets me to feel on but i also think and this might sound silly but sometimes you have to like tell yourself things that you want to embrace so like Mm -hmm. sometimes i'll look in the mirror and i don't this sounds odd but i'll be like you look good today or like 
you know, you're working out really hard. Like it's showing, like, don't be afraid to look at yourself and compliment yourself. It's a mindset. Yeah. Mendes is always shitting on me for, uh, you know, getting into, into my like fashion side. He's like, I just oh, bug him. Yeah. I just sent him his $200 t-shirts. <laughs> it's so funny though, because with guys, people will always ask me this. Or like, when you date, do you notice like how a man dresses? Like, is that something you pay attention to? No. I don't. No, no I girl really does. Don't. No, no girl does. Not really. Is that the case? Uh, I mean, at least with at least with the women. I mean, listen, we're in Miami, so it's you know you're not dealing with like the the best <laughs> sample size here. But uh, for the most part, but it really like. If it's a girl substance, they don't, they couldn't give a shit if I'm in like a Hanes t-shirt or like a, a Palm Angels t-shirt, you know, but if the girl's like out, you know, for some money or she, you know, just wants to like be in the VIP, then they're definitely Possibly. seeing like, do you have a Breitling on? Like yeah. what kind of shit? Do you have Ferragamos? You, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, I think that there's more paying attention to the actual accessories, not so much to clothes. I, I pay more way more attention to what, like, especially like if I'm out and I'm like trying to network, I'll be like, oh. What watch is a guy wearing? Like, yep. does you know? Because just usually what the if watch he's wearing a suit, yeah, like a what kind of cufflinks yeah. do you wear? And see, this is why I tell women on their dating app profiles: do not post designer bags. Oh, uh, it irks me. Uh, Don't show the red soles, like because it really can. Yeah, it's a problem. It's actually very hard when you're someone like me who loves fashion, and <laughs> you know, it's just like in my blood. But like, even for me, I. Don't lead with that so at if, all. So if we came across you on a dating app, how would that look like? <laughs> I'm like, I have to go check because it's been a minute. <laughs> it would look... I, it's good Picture question. with a dog, one on the beach. No. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to think. There's a picture of me like... I like, I think it's okay to show a little bit of skin, like be a little flirty. So like, okay. I, have a, I know this for a fact. I have a crop top in my first picture with a blazer over my shoulders and Solid. high waist and heels. Yeah. There might be like one beach picture, but I don't try to like try too hard on there. Like I really just sort of like, okay, these are new pictures. This looks relevant. I'm not posting any with any boys. So, you know, they don't get confused. I hate when guys do this on apps. They're like, this is not my girlfriend. This is my niece. Like, <laughs> you know? It's, so like, good, you, you know come that. across so that. good. That's such a creepy thing to say, <laughs> though. Like all the time, and then if you, I feel like if you put your animal, then it looks like you care more about like your pet than like a person, because we know that that type exists. Like, I think you should just like post yourself. So, guys, if you don't want to get swiped the wrong way, I think we know what we need to do now. Right? You used to be a Bumble influencer, though, man. So. I was really. I did some. Um, yeah, I did some collabs with Bumble a few. Yeah, it's like, bro, you should get on the app. I'm like, I don't do these. But it was mainly, I don't do it these was, dating apps. It was mainly the Bumble really? Biz, though. It, nah. was, it was mainly why? Bumble Biz. Me? Per, why don't I do them? Why don't you do apps? Uh, I I never liked them. Never. I've always been like a... Uh, it's always been awkward to like, hey, you know, uh, I don't know anything about you other than these four pictures that I saw yeah. that are like super curated and I work in so like I know social media. <laughs> I know how yeah. curated these can be and like, you know, so it's like, hey, do you want to like, do you want me to take you to know, like, I know you want to go to dinner, but you want to go somewhere <laughs> expensive, of course. So. <laughs> And like, I don't want to spend three hundred dollars for me to like not not be interested in not you at interested. all. I'll you tell know? you something yeah. here in Miami. Um, you ask anybody, Bumble's a little bit more like sophisticated, no and then Tinder's like the very ratchet. A lot of yeah, my friends in New York are like Raya. Yeah, Raya. That's a that's a upper echelon one, according oh, to yeah. my friends. I'm on Raya. I am on there. I have been with one guy from there a couple of years ago, but they're. The guys are like so artsy, which there's nothing wrong with that. But when I say artsy, I'm talking about like, like really like LA, LA types. Mm. So if that makes sense, like not to stereotype, but honestly, that is kind you can of what. stereotype. It's okay. We do it quite a bit <laughs> okay. on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> we do it quite a bit. It's just so easier to box it. people in, you know? Yeah. No, dating apps, they don't work for me. But like when you're living like this, sometimes you just need a little eye candy. Hey, there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. See, the thing is, like, I feel like I would get super addicted. You know what I mean? Like, I would just be fucking... Ha- I would be the guy that, like, created the, the like, mechanical swiping <laughs> finger. Automatic. You know? I would just want to be, like, the best... Just get them all, like, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I go through phases. I haven't been on in months because I just feel like it's a waste of my time. But, you know... You can't judge when someone. A lot of quality out there where, <laughs> where you're at. No, no. <laughs> Not at all. But it's so funny. There's this guy who is 
like around my age, who's like locally in my town out in the Hamptons, I usually live in the city. So he's like the only guy I see who's my age. And I'm always like, I have never seen him with a girl. And I'm always wondering like what the deal is. Cause like you look like he's attractive. He's smart. Like I'm always like, what's the story? And then one time I'm like, oh my God. It's funny what you said about Tinder. I downloaded Tinder and I'm like, let's see if he's on here. And he was. And I'm like, this is the answer. Like if you're on Tinder, Grind that me. says a lot about what Grind. you're looking for. Mm. See that? Got caught. I would just assume that these apps are, <laughs> are for sex. You know? Like uh, I don't know. it could be. Tinder. But yes. like Tinder you know, yes. like Match.com and stuff I have, like that. I have a bunch of friends mm-hmm. that have met on 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 uh not Bumble. What's the other one? Uh, Hinge. 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 Hinge, there Hinge right. yeah. That's what people say, but I don't so, know. So you mentioned guy your age. Are you Were you guys your age? Older? Younger? What am I into? Yeah. Older. A lot older? Like older. salt and pepper? Uh, or? <laughs> um, I feel like 10 years is sort of like a good number. I am not opposed to being with someone my own age, but as you both know, men take a little longer to mature than women. What are you saying about so us I, personally? <laughs> we're around your age. You we're know, around you know your age. No, you know this as, no, you guys are mature, but like in general, men take we're, a little more no, time to mature, you. Yeah. you know, in general. So um, I'm not opposed to my age. I just, it hasn't really worked. It's funny you say that though. I've always, <laughs> most of the time, I've attracted older women. Really? Yep. My ex. How old are you guys? I'm 28. I'm 29. I'll be 30 in October. Oh my God. 30, yeah. 30. I know. Don't remind me. I feel old. <laughs> Everyone who's listening to the podcast, oh, you're not fucking old. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know. It's I'm my it's my lived experience. So. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I feel like you can't put an age on things. Like, I'm just saying that's what in the past has worked, yeah. but. Oh, internally, I'm the internally I'm the 85 year old man like spraying the kid off of his lawn for sure. That's me. I'm I'm a hundred percent a grumpy old man. He is a grumpy old man. He'll tell you. Oh. He has to do with me every day. I'm a woman in her shoes. So and if, and if he's not picking on you, then you there's a problem yeah. there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He has to pick on you to show you that he loves you. Yeah, I grew up in a fucked up family. It's okay. We don't have to talk about it. He's we, a New Yorker we, too. We really? really? Yeah, Yorker I'm from here? I'm from well not. Not from the city. I'm from Bumblefuck, yeah. upstate New York, like right on the Canadian border. I moved to Syracuse for undergrad. That's great. Sorry for, again, people on podcast, oh, you into Syracuse. And I'll say it again. Of it. Somehow, there's always there's a connection always a draw, between yeah. him and our guests from something with New York or Syracuse. All my friends lived in the city, though. Well, I don't know about it anymore, but but before. Yeah, they probably all come down to where you are. No one's here. It's very not nah, there. You know, I think I made them really afraid of Miami. You know, coming. I've been here for eight years, and I, I don't think a lot of them can, you know, we were talking about the places that we'd like to go to off, uh, you know, before we started the podcast, and, you know, I take them there once or twice, and, and they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't handle it very well, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm telling you, New York right now is, it's a little. Yeah, you know, some of my friends are still, there, like, yeah, well, it's, you know, they're like, try, try and true, like, it's going to last, I'm like, you know, I don't know, man, like, you might be holding on to a thread there. Yeah, I, I'm i hoping, I think this summer, like always, it'll just be a little more normal because you can be outside more, but I don't know. I can't live like this for another yeah. I I want year. the events to come back. I want all this stuff to come back so I can go out there and start networking with people again. That's my jam, so. Do you see yourself <laughs> staying staying up north or... Uh, I know you said you come down here quite a bit. Do you plan, do you plan on spending more time in South Florida? Like I every other New Yorker? Do. Yeah, like non-COVID times, I'm usually in Florida every month. Like, it's like a second home. I was about to move to LA right before COVID. Um, Ooh, I was got lucky there. It's crazy. I know my family's so happy that didn't happen. And you um, really would have gotten more of those artsy guys. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that would not work for me. I know. Just I stay on Tinder because then you meet the guys that go to like Tao, and then you're then you're screwed. <laughs> Exactly. No, I would be even more single there, but um, I'm such a New Yorker. Like I love being close to my family. I think New York will always be home, but I no, we're all super mobile today or we, we used to be and we can be and hopefully will be. So, you know, and, I'll go wherever I have to go. And how do you, how do you like the comparison between, you know, being able to work remote and I mean, obviously right now with how things are still with COVID and people getting vaccinated, staying at home. A lot of people are still doing that, but the ability to work remote versus 
you know, how it was before COVID where if you were in the city, like you were grinding, you weren't leaving the city. You weren't really being able to like go out to the Hamptons and work remote unless you were, you know, uh, executive or something who, who had a little more accessibility. Right. So how has that been for you in that transition? I mean, it's been a little difficult, I would say, just because it's not what I'm used to. Um, like I said before, because I'm not moving around, like I am able to be more productive. Um, but it's, it's strange. It's a weird time. I don't like all of this distant stuff. Like I like to touch and like to smell and, you know, use on my five senses. But I think this is just sort of the reality that we're living in. And at least we have, you know, technology that allows us to still see people. Um, but it's hard. It's hard when you, I think, done anything for so long. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, and I think it's just one of these things where it's like, <laughs> obviously now there's going to be nuances and changes moving down the road. And there's going to be a lot of new adaptations, a lot of companies too doing new things where they're not going to bring back old models or even people coming back to work, they're going to keep them at home. Um, I think so most people will stay at home. I do. Yeah. Or they're creating like, mic they're scaling down the office sizes. So I was hearing something too, like some businesses are going to be like, okay, you only have to come in for two days and then the rest of the day you can be at home. I'm going even more like remote. That. Yeah, you're yeah. going you're even what? more. He's moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm, I'm They're really moving to Puerto Rico? Oh, yeah. Why? Uh, Why? I, I like it down there. It's quite, you know, I come from the country. So like being... I'll be like uh, far from San Juan on the West Coast where it's a, a yeah. lot more uh, outdoorsy here. I grew up like kayaking, fishing, you know, doing a lot of the more like grimy, gr gritty stuff. And I feel right. like I'm getting super soft here. And I always I always use this as an example. Like I'm starting to get super triggered when like the, the beach attendant at Soho House doesn't like get my chairs ready. And I know. When this starts to happen, I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm living too pampered of a lifestyle. Well, that's because you live on South <laughs> Beach. You live on South Beach. Oh, but don't you think you're going to get bored? Of oh, no way. No way. No, kayaking, <laughs> hiking, <laughs> surfing. About your bromance. Uh, I'll come back. I'll, still, stay, be, I'll still be coming back. So I won't, get, I won't get island fever, I don't think, because I'll be coming back uh, to Miami every month. You know, so that we can hang out and and he can get, give me all the bromantic love he yeah. wants. But he just wants to make sure I'm not swiping on Tinder. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on him. He doesn't know, but I I've, I have people watching. Yeah. You know, keep I was going to say, I feel like you, you mutually have to watch out for each other. What is the connection between the two of you? Uh, we both worked at Equinox together. Yeah, yeah. back yeah. in the day. And down and down here, I mean, you've been here enough. You probably understand. Like, you know, people aren't super reliable, right? So, like, you find. You find one or two people, maybe like a small group of people who are really passionate and motivated and want to like even him and I have completely different interests yeah. for most. Things. You can even tell we're completely oh. two different looking people as well. Yeah. But <laughs> but the one thing is like I can always trust him with his, his work ethic and his ability to to want to get better, you know, and that was something that I thought that it, or I, I still believe that I have, you know, so I was like, OK, well. There aren't many people, I believe, like him, like myself down here. Um, and when you find someone like that, you just you want to do more projects together. We yeah, were talking about that right before the podcast, yeah. actually. Yeah, we literally were. It's it's the truth, though. Like down here, when you find um, you say you find gold, you got to keep the gold, you know, because it's yeah. really hard to to find, you know, that gold within the rocks because there's a lot of rocks. There's a lot of people that'll say they do certain things. They'll, they'll oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like this as a worker or I'll produce this for you. And it's just like a lot of half ass shit done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just always been the notion here in Miami. I've been I'm born and raised here. So half, I've, I've, half is even. Used to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm used yeah. to it. And I see it and it's just like, uh, nah. I know where this is yeah. going. You know, See, you need some of that New York mentality because New Yorkers, right. when they give you your word, you know, that's that why sometimes, true. you know, sometimes I get on his nerves, but he knows it's just because I'm from New York. It's like, <laughs> listen, I, when I when we need to get shit done, it's like I just want to get it done right now. now. Right it, now. It works, yeah. though, because yesterday we're, we're, uh, <laughs> we're we both have different. Uh, we both need each other. It's one of those things where we realize you're like completely different people needing each other's strengths, because if not, it, it just oh. won't. We won't get to the top. Opposites attract, you know. Yeah, I'm like, what, uh, is, what is that saying you say? I'm, I'm like the kite in your... Uh... I like the line. He, he's, he'll come in and be like, bro, I have 45 different ideas. Like, okay, great, but we haven't even gone through like the 40 we, we talked about yeah, yesterday. Like, so come on, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> uh, it's a, just a little more tinkering. And he'll be like, a little more tinkering. So it works. 
Yeah. It yeah. came out of his ass, and then he kind of holds me down. Mm. <laughs> it's good. You balance each other out. It's nice. It, exactly. So I want to ask you, um, since you did mention, you know, events, network, all that stuff that you like enjoy doing. What's something that you're looking forward to when things open up? Do you have an event plan that you want to do in person? Tell us a little bit about that. I think it would be really cool to do lunchtime with Sydney live at restaurants, hotels, like make it a real live thing where people can come watch and um, brands can activate in really cool ways. And I think that's something that we've all thought about. Um, so I think it would be fun to make that happen. I, yes, hosted lots of events for tons of brands every year. I have a really successful virtual online event business right now. Um, but I'm sure we'll be bringing those back when, you know, the, the stores need the help of getting people back in the door. So I'm happy, happy to do that. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to all of that. It's just, it's weird because there's no timing on it. So these hypothetical, like looking forward to, it's so strange. And that's why even as someone who's such a planner, I'm so like right now in the moment, like not looking past the next two months yeah. because I think it's so hard to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that's a bad, bad plan at all to have, you know, because it gives you the ability to pivot really quickly, you know, that, which is, which is key right now. Key. And that word is another one, which like, I will never, I think we will not use that word. Pivot. Oh, I'm already pivot. getting so, I mean, it, <laughs> But it's it's it clearly describes kind of like what we've had to do yep. pretty often uh, in does. the past calendar year. You know? It sums up my journey definitely, but it goes on the list of tie dye puzzles. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was a, that was a sacrifice, so so you can uh, get to where you're at now, right? <laughs> it, you know something? I believe everything happens for a reason. Hundred percent. You for all the shows I've been on, all the red carpets I've covered. Like there's nothing that's been more rewarding professionally than the moment that I'm in right now. So despite things being really difficult and, you know, I'm sure we can all find lots of reasons to complain. Like I also feel really, really lucky and I don't take any of this all for granted. And that's amazing. And that's the attitude you got to have. I'm the same way. I'm like, things happen for you, not to you. Um, yeah. And there's a reason behind it all. And it's just like, I, f I feel like it's always for a better purpose down the road, whether yes. you go through some bullshit or you go through some struggles, obstacles, it, there's always a, a much better reward on the other side. And it's just, it's just test. Life is testing you, right? Life is testing your this character. Is this mm, is, a, this big is a big one though. It's huge one. It's uh it's interesting. I know that's why I even like, I hold myself to such a standard. I'm like, you have really not gone out in like a year. Are you really going to give that up now? Like you've done it this long. You're going to yeah. blow it tonight. That's what I keep in my mind. I would have blew it. <laughs> you blew it. I would. Yeah. I went out, I went out January 2nd outdoors, outdoors. And it was like yeah. all, all like tables only, but of course, but. lots of masks down there. I'm sure. Uh, honestly there, I was pretty surprised. Like, I mean, Given you're gonna have, you know, it's still Florida, so you're gonna you're gonna have a, yeah. a bunch of people doing their own thing. But I was pretty surprised. For the most for the most part down here, you know, I mean, listen, you have your assholes like, oh, man, don't tell me what to. Do. But everyone's pretty respectful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Miami yeah. Dade is, uh, well, at least South Beach is pretty liberal. So a yeah. lot of a lot of Matt. Once you get over into the mainland, down where he's at, not so, probably not so much. Well, if you go further, further out, yeah, or, or like if you go to the west coast of Florida. West Coast of Florida is more like conservative. Yeah, that's a lot of boat parades out there, but not, right. not so much. Yeah. <laughs> not, not so yeah, much. Yeah, no. But it's hard. Yeah, Cindy, we want to thank you for coming on. I know uh, we're almost at the the end of the hour, but how can people uh, reach out and and communicate with you? How can they? I know that you mentioned uh, the time that you host the daily Instagram lives, but why don't you do that one more time so people can tune in and, and yeah. stay up to date on on each and every one that you're going to be launching in the future. Thank you. Yeah, you guys can check out me and my show on Instagram at Sydney Sadik and Monday through Thursday, 12 30 p.m. Eastern. Amazing. Bring your lunch. <laughs> awesome. Time to light you up with some quick burn round questions. Okay. Uh, you ready? Let's do it. Boom. All right. Question number one What was the most challenging moment in your career? Ooh, walking away from my. Uh, job as a magazine editor at the Daily Front Row with a consistent salary and great position. Mm, that is tough. But look at you now. Worth it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Question number two. What ha was the funniest moment in your career? Because I know you worked with a lot of big people. So what was the funniest moment? Being stuck inside the L.A. Staples Center backstage room with Cody Simpson before Cody was like really Cody dating Miley Cyrus. Wow, that is funny. <laughs> it was like bizarre. <laughs> Qu 
Question number three. What was the wildest experience you've ever had in your career? Ooh, wild. I feel like there was like this one trip where I had to be, I was in LA. I had to be in DC a day later and then back in LA literally a day after oh, that. So I did not sleep in a hotel room for two nights. I slept on red eyes. Both of those nights <sighs> back and forth the time zone and on TV, both mornings. Like, yeah, a lot. Kudos to you. Kudos <laughs> to you. Last and final question. What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners today in one sentence? Be an executor. Don't just be an idea person. The, you know, even some of the worst ideas, it's better to try and make them happen versus not taking that chance. Sometimes rejection and things failing is what makes you even stronger. And just don't be afraid of that. Be afraid of not doing what makes you uncomfortable should be less frightening than being really comfortable. Being comfortable is the worst thing ever. I always say it. You guys heard it. Be uncomfortable and be an executor. That's it. Way to wrap it up. Love it. it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. Make sure you guys all check her out. Instagram, Instagram live. I've checked out a couple of them. Honestly, they've been great so yeah. far, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to the ones in the future. And we will be hitting up for those books. Oh, hell yeah. Yes, for sure. send me your address. I will send them. Yeah. That's the closest I'm going to get to Miami is me <laughs> on a book cover. Great. Well, well, next, time, next time you do come, when you do, when it is ready to, for you to come, you got to let us know. We'll have you here live. Yeah, I definitely. will let you know. Definitely. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank you. Until next time, everybody.